campaign in orderly manner. Let me ask you about that. I mean, you talked about the bill that Donald Trump uh, quashed. Uh, that was in 2024. You talked about the bill he tried to get passed in 2021. That wasn't able to get passed. 2022, 2023, sure. there were record border crossings. You, your administration took a number, hundreds of executive actions. It didn't stem the flow. Numbers kept going up. Finally, in 2024, uh, just in June, three weeks before the last, the first presidential debate with Joe Biden, uh, you institute executive actions that had a dramatic impact, really shut down people crossing over. Why didn't your administration do that in 2022, 2023? First of all, you're exactly right, Anderson. And as of today, we have cut the flow of immigration by over half. In fact, the numbers I saw most recently, mm. illegal immigration. But if is it was low, that easy on, with that finish. executive me, action, why not do it in 2022, well, 2023? Because we were working with Congress and hoping that actually we could have a long-term fix to the problem instead of a short-term fix. You couldn't have done one and the, both at the same time? Well, here's the thing. I, we have to understand that ultimately this problem is going to be fixed through congressional action. Congress has the authority and the purse. I, I hate to use DC terms, but literally they write the checks. Part of the issue is in order to really fix the problem at the border. I was just at the border recently talking with border agents. You know what they talk about? Yes, they are overwhelmed. They're working around the clock. And the other thing that they talked to me about we need more judges down there to deal with asylum claims. We need more personnel down there to deal with processing. And, but Anderson, and that's where Congress kicks in, in terms of dedicating the resources to actually fixing the problem. We have dealt with it such that, to your point, we now, as of today, as of our, our visit, have lower undocumented immigrants and illegal immigration than Trump when he left office. That, that's true. But we need a permanent solution. And that wish requires you done that? bipartisan work. Do you wish you'd done those executive orders in 2022, 2023? I think we did the right thing. And but the, the best thing that can happen for the American people is that we have bipartisan work happening. And I pledge to you that I will work across the aisle to fix this longstanding problem. I think the American people are demanding it. Yeah. on both sides of the aisle. And it's time we actually put the partisan approach to this aside. We know what can work. Whoa, are you guys, <laughs> you guys as dizzy as I am after being in that world, that word salad tornado, are you guys? Ugh, I got vertigo. I need to sit down. It's like when you uh, you drink too much and the next day you got the spin. Even when you close your eyes and lay on the floor, everything is still spinning. I'm like, whoa. Give me a minute, Kamala. Let me calm down. Let everything stop spinning. Let me get my bearings. That was crazy. Because all he asked was, why didn't you implement these policies in 2022, 2023? Now, if you don't know what that was, lucky you, but I'm going to tell you. That was Kamala's CNN town hall from last night, and it was a fucking unmitigated disaster. It was terrible. I don't know why they keep trotting this woman out in front of the cameras. I'm glad they do. But I don't know why, because it doesn't matter where she goes. Now, going to Fox, you expected that to be somewhat hostile. You expected her to not maybe perform at her best on Fox. Turns out it wasn't hostile. Brett Baer was very professional, very kind, very patient. I know he was more patient than you and I would have been. Because I wanted to stand up and say, answer the fucking question. It's yes or no. In Spanish, si or no. Which one is it? Very simple. Couldn't do it. Tap dance for three minutes on each answer. Couldn't say yes. 
We should have done this earlier. My bad, America. And I promise you, during my presidency, my mistakes will not have birthdays. She could have handled that totally different, but she can't because she's inept. She's incapable. This was on CNN. There is no safer place, no safer space for Kamala, the Ugandan nightmare, the politician who went horizontal so her career could go vertical. There is no more kind and safe, warm, soft, cushiony place than CNN. And she fell apart. She fell apart completely. I got another clip for you, too. Because Anderson Cooper, he did a good job. He was just doing his job. Of course he's not going to attack you. It's CNN. Democratic politicians, CNN. One and the same. Those are your people. They're going to take care of you, Kamala. They're going to give you the nice underhand soft, and then as the ball is slowly tumbling through the air, they're going to run up behind you. They're going to grab your arms like ghosts, and they're going to swing the bat for you. Don't worry, Kamala. Just show up. You saw the other day Maria Shriver, or as her ex-husband Arnold Schwarzenegger calls her, Skeletor. You saw her up on stage, and the lady said, hey. Are we going to get to ask her some of our own questions? And Maria Shriver, a.k.a. Skeletor, said, no, we have pre-scripted questions. Hopefully, I'll ask a question that's in your head. <laughs> oh, man, she's not serious. Imagine if Trump were somewhere and somebody stood up and said, hey, can we ask him questions? No, we have pre-scripted answers, pre-scripted questions, but I hope. I'll ask a question that's in your head. That's what she said. So there's no safer space than CNN, and Kamala could not handle it. Uh, 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 uh. Wait till I play you the clip of where he asked her about her faith. Your religion, your beliefs, your religious beliefs. God, she's supposed to be, is she a Christian or a Catholic? I guess she's supposed to be Christian. She went to the black church. In Atlanta, on her birth on her birthday, and she says she went to the twenty third Street something church in Oakland. So I'm assuming she's Christian. But Anderson Cooper asked her about her faith, something she's believed in in her entire life, and it was the most uncomfortable shit you've ever seen. Uncomfortable. This was awful. This woman believes nothing. She has nothing inside of her. She only has what is put into her by her masters, by the establishment, by the media, by whoever's pulling the fucking strings around here. Those are the only opinions she has. You ever heard somebody say, if, you want, if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. That's her. She's the embodiment of, if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. She has no opinions of her own. And it's something she said in the beginning, this girl asked her, um, what is she going to do? The classic question, you've heard it asked her a hundred times. How is your presidency going to be different from Biden's? You've been in there for three and a half years. What are you going to do differently if we give you the reins, woman? And of course, here we go. Da -da 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 -da. Tap dancing. Gregory Hines would be proud. She's tap dancing. One thing that she says is, I raise children. She said the words, I raised children. No, you didn't. Doug Emoff has two children from his previous marriage, Cole and Emma. Emma was 15 when you started dating her dad, and Cole was 20. That's not raising kids. You can't come in at the finish line and say you ran the race. No, you didn't. You came in at the 11th hour. The boy was already grown. There's nothing you could teach him. You didn't raise him. And the girl was 15. She probably didn't even want to talk to you. But she says, I raised kids. No, you fucking didn't. That's a slap in the face to all the real step parents who have been there for years and put in the time and put in the work. You did not raise any children. You are not a parent. 
You're a parent on paper because you're married to their dad, but you're not a parent. You don't know what it's like to, to have those feelings for a child and to raise a child and try to teach it and make it a decent person and instill all the things that it needs, give it all the tools it needs to navigate the world and weed out, pick up all... You know, you eat something, you got to pick a bone out, pick out all the crazy shit that your parents did to you and try to make it better for that kid. You don't know what that's like. You didn't raise any children. You came in a few weeks before graduation and one of the kids was already 20. The woman's full of more shit than a Christmas turkey. But I can't tell you. I can't explain it to you that well. Let me give the mic. Back to Kamala, the Ugandan nightmare. And she will explain to you exactly how full of shit she really is. Please, Madam Vice President. And it's time we actually put the partisan approach to this aside. We know what can work. Well, let's talk about this compromise bill you, that you want to pass if you're elected. You said that's going to be a priority. It includes $650 million in funding for the border wall. That's something Republicans wanted. That was part of the compromise under Donald Trump, you criticized the wall more than 50 times. You called it stupid, useless, and a medieval vanity project. Is a border wall stupid? Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. <laughs> so remember Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for it? Come on. They didn't. The fuck was that? How much of that wall did he build? I think the last <laughs> number I saw was about 2%. And then when it came wow. time for him to do a photo op, you know where he mm. did it? In the part of the wall that President Obama built. But you're agreeing so, to a on. bill that would earmark $650 million <laughs> to continue building that we, wall. I, I pledge that I am going to bring forward that bipartisan bill mm. to further strengthen and secure our border. Yes, I am. But and I'm going to work across the aisle to pass com a comprehensive bill mm. that deals with a broken immigration system. I think Jackson's question, part of it was to acknowledge that America has always had migration, mm -hmm. but there needs to be a legal process for it. People have to earn it. No shit. And that's the point that I think is the most important point that can be made, which is we need a president who is grounded in common sense and practical outcomes. Like, let's just fix this thing. Let's just fix it. Why is there any ideological perspective on this? Let's just fix the problem. It, it, to fix the problem, you're, you're doing this compromise bill. It does call for $650 million that was earmarked under Trump to actually still go to build the wall. I am not afraid of good ideas where they occur. You know, so you don't think it's stupid anymore? I think what he did and how he did it did, was, did not make much sense because he actually didn't do much of anything. What is she saying? He asked a very clear question. You said it was stupid. You insulted him over 50 times regarding the border wall. So you're supporting a bill that has $650 million to go toward what Trump wanted and what you used to call stupid. So is it stupid now? Guy, 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 guy. Well, let's talk about Trump and that wall. Guy, guy, guy. He said Mexico pay for it. Come on. It was like a comedian telling a joke and he's like, huh, huh? And you just hear in the background, one person. That was terrible. This woman is awful on her feet. Maybe that's why she spends so much time on her back because she is terrible on her feet. She says, well, look, I can't handle it on my feet. I better stay on my knees and my back. This woman is awful. She is vapid. She is empty. She has no conviction and she believes Jack shit. Again, we asked this question with Sloppy Joe four years ago. How can anybody look at this person and listen to them speak for more than 30 seconds and cast their vote? But you know the dummy is strong in them. The dummy is strong in this one. Vote once and vote early. I'm going to get my voting done. I will let you guys know. Keep it. Keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to upload a video as soon as I'm done voting for Donald Trump. But this is the alternative. That. That thing that cannot handle an interview on CNN, a town hall. Trump thrives in these situations. We don't know what the people are going to say. I don't know what their question is going to be. That's why if you stick to the truth, you don't have to worry about shit like that. You know Kamala was up there with the nervous farts. Mm -hmm. 
You know, remember you were a kid and you about to get in a fight or get your ass whooped? Uh -huh. We got, oh, uh -huh. we got that gas of nervous farts. You know, it smelled like shit up there. I'll meet you in the comments. What did you think? Did you think that was the crash and burn Hindenburg that I thought it was? <laughs> Holy shit. Let me know, you guys. I will meet you in the comments. I'm out.